Hi again, it's Lawrence Krauss. And in response to many of you, I am recording this in landscape mode. Thanks for your suggestion. Um, and uh, I'm gonna try something new and uh, we'll see if it works. Uh, it's a beautiful day out here in, uh, in Oregon, a sunny day, so I thought I'd do it outside here. And I wanna continue to talk about the expanding universe today. Um, uh, and uh, another thing I should say in response to many of you is that, is that uh, who, who had suggested more sophisticated software methods and is that I really believe in talking about physics that you don't need a lot of fancy stuff. And uh, therefore, even when I used to do demonstrations in class, I'd always try and do as low tech as possible because I'd like to present things that you could do at home for someone else. So those are the uh, things that are governing some of my five minute physics and I've taken a minute out to talk about that, so maybe I'll talk for another five minutes after this. Uh, but I want to talk today about the history of the expanding universe, and I'm going to do a little bit of uh, drawing and a, and a little bit of math, and we'll see how it works. Um, because I want to show how you can understand the history of the universe pretty simply. Um, so remember, I, uh, I talked about the fact that we had sort of a, an expanding universe, and I'll just draw a bunch of galaxies around here. These are my little galaxies. Okay, I don't know if you can see them. I'll get a little closer. And, the, and any region of the universe is expanding, as the universe is expanding in general, if the, if the region is big enough. Okay? Now, uh, the question is, what's, what's the history of the universe look like? And, what, and, and we can say, let's, let's, let's talk about the energy of the universe, and, and particularly the energy density of, of matter in the universe. Each of these galaxies weighs a certain amount, say a mass m. And uh, um, we, uh, the, the total energy of, in, in any given region is mc squared, the, the mass energy of each galaxy, times the number of galaxies in the region. Okay, so that's the total mass energy in any given region. Okay, now because the universe, we don't have know the size of the universe, it's reasonable to talk about only local quantities. So instead of talking about the total energy in any region, say of volume V, let's talk about the energy density. So we're always talking about local quantities. I'll call that rho. And the energy density is simply that total energy divided by the volume. Okay, so let's, let's draw a curve, which is the energy density of matter as a function of the size of the universe, as the size of the universe has gotten bigger. And, and there's some number now. The, the energy density of matter today, we'll, we'll call that some number. And this is today. What did it do over time? Well, if you look at this, the volume of any region, any spherical region of radius r, is proportional to the cube of the radius. For those of you who remember from high school uh, mathematics, the volume of a sphere of radius r is 4 thirds pi r cubed, but forget the 4 thirds and the pi, it's just proportional to the cube of the radius. So the density goes like the number of galaxies in the region, times the mass, c squared, over r cubed. So the density goes like r to the minus 3. That means r 1 over r cubed. So if I draw this, that means, if I draw it, and particularly using what's called a logarithmic scale, the density falls like r to the minus 3. So the matter density of the universe was bigger at earlier times, it'll get smaller later on. Okay, what about the other density in the universe? Well, the universe is full of radiation. All throughout space, lots of radiation. And that radiation is made of particles called photons. And so we could calculate the energy density of radiation the same way. The energy density of radiation is the number of photons times the energy per photon. Now, the neat thing is we know from Einstein and Planck in quantum mechanics that for every given photon of light, particle of light, if you wish, the energy of that particle 
is some constant, Planck's constant, times the frequency of the light. That's the fundamental concept of quantum mechanics. And therefore, the energy, the energy density of, in radiation is the number of photons in any region times h times their frequency over the volume of the region. Okay? Now, what happens as the universe expands? Well, if an electromagnetic wave that has a wavelength like this, as the universe expands, the wavelength stretches out. The wavelength is proportional to the size of the universe. As the universe gets bigger, the wavelength gets bigger. The frequency, which is 1 over the wavelength, therefore goes down as 1 over the size of the universe. Therefore, if you look at this, I'll write it here, the energy density in photons is the number of photons times h, and then the frequency is some number, call it k, over r, and then over the volume, which is r cubed, so the energy density of radiation goes down as r to the minus 4 power. r to the minus 4 power. One extra power of r. It turns out if we measure the energy density in radiation today, it's way down here. It's about one part in 100,000 of the energy density in matter today. So if this is 1, this is 10 to the minus 5 in that unit. But because it goes down as 1 over r, if we follow it back, at earlier and earlier times, it was, it was falling off faster today. At early times, at some early time, and for all earlier times before that, it was larger than the energy density of matter. We can calculate that time, given that this ratio is one part in 100,000, and we find it was when the universe was roughly between 100 and maybe 1,000 years old. For all earlier times, there was more energy in radiation than there was in matter. That's what we mean when we say we had a hot Big Bang. The, the early universe was always dominated by radiation. The late universe, up to today, at a certain point, was dominated by matter. As long as there was one photon in the universe today, at some early enough time, there were, it, it, there, it was dominated by the energy of radiation. In fact, there are about a billion or ten billion photons in the universe today for every particle of matter, and it turns out the early universe at, uh, at below a time of about 100 to 1,000 years was dominated by radiation. So just from that simple argument, we know that the early universe was hot and dense. Now I want to end with a mystery. And that is, this is all we thought was around in the universe until recently, but now we've discovered that there's about three times more energy in, not in matter, but in empty space. This energy in the universe is called dark energy. We, it seems to be associated with the energy of empty space, and what's really weird is that energy remains constant over time. And it is the biggest mystery in, in physics to try and understand what this dark energy is. But I want to leave you with two things, one of which I'll answer in a subsequent physics, uh, five-minute physics, and one which is a big mystery. The first is, if we look at the fact and say this energy density is constant, what's the total energy contained in empty space in any region? It's the energy density times the volume of that region. But since the volume of the region goes as r square, r cubed, this means the total energy in empty space increases as this cube of the radius of any region. The total energy in empty space in any volume is increasing as that volume increases. That is very strange. And of course, the other thing that's strange about it is that its energy density remains constant. Well, it turns out these two are big mysteries are remarkable. This one we understand, and I'll talk about in a, in a subsequent uh, uh, five-minute physics. This one, uh, sorry, this one we understand. I, the wrong one. This one we understand. We understand wh how it's possible that the energy in any volume of the universe can increase in empty space. But why the universe is full of some energy that remains constant is the biggest mystery in science today. 
I went on for a little longer than five minutes this time, and I tried some math, and I hope I haven't lost you, you, but in a future episode, I'll talk about this, and maybe in the next episode, I'll give you a break and talk about something that has no, no mathematics at all. But enjoy it, and I hope uh, you'll let me know if, if this made sense, and if it didn't, I'll try and use a little math, less math next time. Take care.